I didn't know you had a twin sister, Mr. Fry. Evie Fry, sir. It's a pleasure. Usually I would reciprocate the sentiment, Miss Fry, but today I'm afraid nothing will bring me pleasure. What's troubling you, sir? I am used to people challenging my ideas. In fact, I live for it, the cut and thrust of spirited debate. Lately, however, attacks against my reputation have taken a darker turn. Threats of violence against my person and against my colleagues. I do not wish anyone to be hurt because of my research. You help me with steric syrup. I am in your debt. We help each other, sir. My brother and I will make sure that you can continue your work in peace. What do you know of bones? Only a few of their names learned from books. Hmm. Perhaps it would be simpler if I just explained the situation. A few days ago, a German colleague, Dr. Schwartz, sent me a telegram. He informed me he was on his way to London to deliver a very important fossil, you see. In fact, he should arrive at Charing Cross any moment now. Would you ensure no harm comes to him? I'll ensure Dr. Schwartz's safety and make sure you get that fossil. Splendid. Please do be careful. What is the meaning of this? Mr. Darwin has sent me to ensure you reach him safely with your cargo intact. Just as that in here. Right. So, how is your father? By which we'll I mean my dear father Frank, with whom I grew up, of course. Dr. Schwartz? Never got on the train. Oh. Oh. Enjoy meeting you. We cannot allow Darwin. Don't let me do anything you'll regret. You're not serious. Don't force me to kill you. I'm the manners. At last, my heart hasn't stopped pounding. You have it. Wonderful. But where is Dr. Schwartz? I'm afraid he was intercepted, sir, in Germany. However, I have recovered the fossil. Dear Lord. I should tell you, I was recently approached by men who sought to purchase all my research on the condition I work only for them. Obviously, I refused. Scientific knowledge cannot be bought. It belongs to everyone. Let these villains do their worst. Ah, my young friend! How good it is to see you! Fortunate, really. It would appear a highly toxic plant, which has the extraordinary effect of making people quite delirious, has been found in this very park. Yet, as far as modern science is aware, no such plant exists. I fear the good people of London might be in danger. Will you investigate? Hello. Footprints. Might lead me to the culprit. Well done. But you... you don't seem quite like yourself. Hmm, it's just as I suspected. Those noxious fumes are not being released from the flowers, but from the pots. There must be something in there. An hallucinogenic concoction of some kind. Not unlike the soothing syrup, I should think. We must dispose of it, and quickly. Friend, today's papers carry a rebuttal of Mr. Owen's slanderous and ignorant remarks about my work. However, I'm feeling quite like a fossil today. Would you be a dear and get me a copy of the newspaper?
Yes. Now here's a question for you. Why would you attack a newsboy? A man paid me and my mates to force newsboys to display this leaflet. Here, take the bloody thing and leave me alone. This spells trouble for Mr. Darwin. We are not apes. If the circumstances were not so grave, I'd compliment the artist on the wonderful caricature. They are fools if they believe they can stop progress by printing leaflets and killing newsboys. We must find out who is behind this propaganda before more innocents are harmed. I should very much like it if you could find and remove these awful things. You regret that! Stop! Please! I beg you! Who put you up to this? Why are you spreading slander about Mr. Darwin's theories? Darwin refused to cooperate with us. We wanted to recruit him, but he rebuffed all our offers. We've tried to intimidate him, blackmail him, but he's a stubborn old git. I'm dismantling your propaganda press. unspeakable has happened. A policeman arrested Mr. Darwin and carried him away as if he were nothing but a common criminal. That policeman, he is corrupt to the bones, I'm sure of it. Oh, I do so fear for Mr. Darwin's safety. Miss Nightingale, do you know where they might have gone? The policeman, he did mention a funeral. I believe I know where it is. Follow me. Poor Mr. Darwin has been through so much recently. Those people are trying to discredit a lifetime of work. It's disgraceful. And I fear Mr. Darwin is no longer the fit young man who once traveled the world. Here we are. The obsequies are taking place here. I will wait here. This is the culprit. I was just carrying out my orders. Arresting an old man and dragging him off to Lord knows where is fine work indeed for a policeman. Now, sir, tell us where you have taken Mr. Darwin. A man paid me to bring him to his secret base. How terrible. We will need transportation. <laughs> he is very weak. We shouldn't move Mr. Darwin until I have seen to his wounds. They're here! Attack! Mr. Darwin's condition is stable. You may move him now. Rest up, Mr. Darwin. My sister and I will be along shortly. Look who's here. We were very worried about you, sir. We're looking spry for a fossil, sir. A man's friends are the best measure of his worth. I'm proud to count you among mine. The dangers pass us. No need to leave, sir. What Mr. Darwin needs now is rest. To that end, he's joining his family on the Isle of Wight. Rest, indeed. I shall start work on my next book. I must insist that you recuperate quietly, sir. The acquisition of knowledge is in itself sufficiently recuperative. Go, tell her. This is one fight I am to avoid, sir. Thank you for everything, my friends. Ideas, like people, can only thrive when they are free.